All right, guys, check it out. Some of you guys asked for an in-depth tutorial on fading a beard. So Larry's got the big man's beard. He hasn't been in in a while. We are going to fade it down. I'm going to kind of teach you guys my process of why I do it and how. I'm going to show you guys how I shape the bottom to be the most consistent, the most safe. You know, he's got this nice big beard. We don't want to take off too much. I'm going to show you guys my process. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're going to start off. We're going to comb it out. I already did a little bit. If it's too tangled, don't be afraid to get a pick. You guys see I'm using the wider teeth, not the fine teeth, because it will grab. The more kind of wiry and tangly the beard is, you want to use something like a pick or a wider tooth comb. Larry takes pretty good care of this beard, so it's prepared, guys. The first thing that I always do, depending on the beard shape, I'm going to start with a large guard, and I'm going to follow his cheek shape. I'm actually going to start with the number three. I'm going to close it up. I'm not going to get into this. I'm coming straight down his beard using his his face, using his shape of his face straight down his cheek and off. That's going to give me kind of a baseline on the sides and we will freehand the bottom portion. So, But that's going to give us our shape down. Now I'm going to go up a guard and Larry obviously has a nice full beard. But guys, this is our skinny part that we're going to fade. Everything under that, I want to make sure it's consistent. So if he's lighter here, you guys can see lighter there. It's longer right here lighter back here. So I want all of this consistent, connected to this, then we can fade up. So I went to a number four. I'm gonna keep combing it as we go because I wanna make sure that it's combed out. I'm just gonna cut the top of his cheek more or less to a four to give us a consistent length really to fade out of. So it's similar to doing a fade on the sides. I'm gonna cut the whole side down to a three or a four so that I know I'm fading into a three or a four and it's giving me that consistency. We're doing the same thing on a beard. We're just working the opposite direction. So. The four did it, you guys can see it's a little bit better. I'm gonna do even a little bit more of those. So I'm gonna go back to my three at the very top line of the beard and I'm gonna fade that top up. So now we're to a three. We're gonna be able to come in after the three and start to fade the rest of this. I always call it a sideburn. I don't guess it's a sideburn. The sideburn's up here. But you guys see now we have a nice consistent length above the top of the cheek that connects down into the hair on the bottom and now we can fade it out. Now I'm taking a two. We're just going a little bit higher than we just did. Two guard clothes. You guys see, I'm not going down here. I'm not touching anything I don't need to be touching. Just cutting this top section down. So now we've done four, three, two. We have a consistent length. We cut this down at the top so we can get a nice sharp line on it. It fades down into the length. We'll come down here in a minute and tackle that bottom. Now we can keep working our way up. So one and a half, half open, slightly above the number two. And you guys, because of the way the hair grows, this is hard to explain. And somebody asked me the other day, because of the way the hair grows, it's easier to fade this than it is to fade up here because we're cutting into the hair here, where here we're coming in kind of on top of the layer underneath and we're able to just work our way up. So I really could take like one lick with each guard and fade my way up. So now we have four, three, two, one and a half. I'm going right above the one and a half with an open one. And guys, these are the same exact steps as we did on the fade. So there's our open one. Close it, go up a little bit. On the smaller section, I kind of turn it and get to use the corners a little bit more. I noticed right below that I got a dark spot, so I just go to the previous guard to make sure to get that spot out, and then we'll continue to work our way up. So no different than the steps on a fade. We're doing it exactly the same way. We're just working the other direction. So after the one closed, half guard, half open. And you see, we just want to connect to what we just did without causing a line. Now that's done. Now we go above that with an open clipper, and we're almost all the way out. So open clipper, close it up halfway. Take that line out, close it up at the top. And you guys see we have it faded out. So once we line this up, it's going to look a lot better. Now I'm going to start to shape this side. I like to use a clipper, guys. I am going to use the booster that I've been using, combing it out again. I'm going to start in the middle where it's full. He wants to leave most of it that we can, so we shaped it this way. Now we have to round into the bottom. So I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to start rounding it in. I use a clipper because it's going to cut a lot better than a trimmer. At this point, once we get it kind of shaped, we can come in for the bottom line to make sure the lines are sharp, and we can use our trimmer. So you guys see the clothes clipper just cuts right through all this bulk. Some trimmers are good enough to do that. But I like to use a closed clipper. It's just going to do it a little bit easier. If your clipper is really zero gapped and closed, then just be careful touching on their neck when you get you know, down in here. We want to be careful. We don't want to hit him with it and kind of cut his neck or be too sharp. So you guys see we got a nice shape. I might even raise him up so you guys can see it even a little bit better. Yeah, so you guys can see. I raise him up. I can get to it a little bit better. But we're basically creating the bottom shape. And then I need to step around and see 
if this corner is good. So I'm coming back behind him, I'm standing over here, and I can see anything hanging out past. So now I'll just come here and take off anything that's hanging past. You guys see we have a nice shape on this side of the beard. Now we can come in with the trimmer and kind of detail that line work. And then uh, we will obviously razor his top line, do the mustache and all that. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side so you guys can see the finished product. And then we'll do the mustache, the razor work, and all the rest of it. So as I'm gonna use my sabers at the top here, I can make sure that it is trim or bald, make sure that we got it all the way faded out. We're gonna do the back bar here, guys. I like to do it pretty much straight down. So cutting off as little as possible. Nice straight line up. And again, guys, everybody's beard's a little bit different, so you gotta obviously cut accordingly to what they have on on their head, on their face, on their beard. Uh, but most people, I kind of bring this straight down. And then most of the time, this line here is gonna be parallel with this line here. So I don't like it when it's skinny and it's, it's thicker back here than here. I want it to be consistent. So I'm looking at that as I decide where my line work's gonna be. But that's my best rule of thumb. And you guys see we got a nice sharp line on the back. Kind of comb it again, make sure anything that's hanging out. And I can freehand now because it's such a little amount and clean that up. Now we'll move on to the bottom line that we did at first. I'll have him tilt just slightly. And now I'm gonna comb it out again. We're gonna use our trimmer to finalize this line. So it's already here. Use the trimmer. I'm gonna freehand what I got. As I get to his neckline, I can, uh, I can get that neckline nice and sharp with the trimmers. The clipper will do the trick, guys, but obviously the trimmers are shorter and they're for line work. So just gonna finalize with the trimmer, obviously to bald out everything underneath as well. I apologize, guys. Evan is next to me just, he feels like he has to yell at the barber shop, so. I know we talked about it in my last video. These mics are, these mics are pretty good about kind of picking up my voice while I'm talking, so I guess I just gotta keep talking so you guys can't hear all this, all this madness in the barber shop. But you guys see we got this side together pretty well. Now I can use my trimmer really just to detail. Now I like to do my, I learned this from my guy Get Beam, but I like to do this top line really all with a razor. So all I'm looking to do is get this stubble off his cheek so that, you know, we're doing a little bit less drag with the razor, causing a little bit less irritation. So we're, we're all set on all the beards so far. I can come in and do that beard line and then we'll move on to the other side. All right guys, so we're gonna come in with the razor. I wanna take off as little as possible. He likes it a little wider here. We obviously did a ball fade, so there's no hair up here. So I'm looking at where it's full. I'm gonna try to leave it as full as possible. I'm gonna take my thumb, stretch the skin. Make sure we got it on camera nice. Stretch the skin, nice and tight. Pull the blade to the line. Once you see, once I let go, it, it snaps back. So I can take something that's curved stretch it and make it straight. So, I don't know how well you guys are seeing that. I'm gonna, I'll zoom in on the computer so you can see it, but see we got a nice curve. Now we get close to here, now we're just gonna do it straight. So, again, stretch the skin. I'm getting that cheek hair for him. Stretch the skin, take your blade to the line. You see he got that nice, sharp beard line. So, work our way up. Same thing, cheek hair, stretch the skin, take the blade to it. We got one more little line up here. And then I like to actually comb off that ash line because sometimes it's a little too fake. So I'll comb off the ash line, make sure that it is looking how I want. You see we lost some of that sharpness. So now I will hit it one more time. It's already shaped where we want. We don't have to take a lot off. Obviously, we're trying not to take any more off. Just trying to get that line sharp. So, again, guys, just stretch the skin, get the skin tight. See if we get a nice, sharp line. And don't get me wrong, they're welcome. They got good players, but they're not. They're not. Boom. And there's that side. I hope that made sense to you guys. We're gonna move on to the other side. We got this side pretty much done. I'm gonna do the other side, make sure it's consistent, do the mustache, and then uh, check out the finished product. Same thing here, guys. Number three, with the grain, down the cheek, using his face shape. So 
We're creating a shape that goes straight down. Again, guys, if it's a humongous beard and you need it to slope out, then you don't want to get that tight with it. But you guys can just adjust accordingly. So now I went to the four like I did on the other side, up above where we just connected. Cut it with a number four. We'll just continue to work our way up. So now we're connected in. Go to a three next, a little bit above the four. After the three guys, number two at the very top of the beard line. It's so hard for me to explain, guys. I don't, I don't really have the words to explain why it's easier to fade this way versus up into the hair. Uh, but basically, the hair's just growing down. So really, I could come in with like an open clipper and shape into it if I was good enough, really, if I wanted to risk it. Uh, but you really can just come in from all this length and kind of slope right into what you're trying to do. So it's, it's just easier than cutting against where the hair is growing, like we're going up on the side of the head and a little bit less, you know, it's gonna leave less lines and things like that. So there's our one and a half. Now I want to open at the top of this little, I call it kind of the wedge where it all meets right here. Open one, close it up, go right above it. Close one, I see a little bit of a line down here. So let's go back to what I just was using so I know what I'm doing. One and a half right above it. Make sure it's good. Last but not least, guys, last guard, I guess. Half guard, half open, above the closed one. Doesn't take long, guys, pretty easy. Now, last but not least, this time, open clipper, half open clipper. Close it up at the top, and you see we got it. We got to fade it out. Same thing, guys, on this side. We'll make sure it's combed out well. Go ahead and freehand it. I can come from the side we already did and kind of bring my guide over. It's, it's not really a guide traditionally like on top, but same idea. I can see where I came. Now I have that set, and now I can work it on this side straight over to this far corner. Then once I get that established even better, guys, I will go to the front and make sure that I have a nice shape that matches on both sides. So constantly combing it out. There's always gonna be hairs, you know, up under here, especially like up in here that we're gonna have to get. That's why a wide tooth comb or a pick is gonna be better for that sometimes. And I just love how these clippers cut, guys. This is the boosted, you can freehand with it. And it just does so good. So you see we got the shape started, pretty consistent. Now we'll come around to the front and make sure that it all ties together well. I'll actually just turn him straight on. Make sure, so we're just looking, guys. We wanna make sure, go ahead and lean back just a little bit. We wanna kinda of look here and make sure that we have a consistent shape here. I can see it's a little low right here, but we're pretty much on par. So now I'm just looking to get it consistent before we come in with our trimmer and really kind of finalize the finished look. The newer you guys are, sometimes you're gonna do all this and get to one side and the other side is gonna be way different than what, uh, what the one side is. So you obviously wanna aim for it to be matching on both sides. If you can do it from the get-go, then that's ideal. But uh, sometimes it'll take you a few licks. Obviously guys, less is more, you can't put it back on. So start with a trim, the more comfortable you are, the more you can just kind of go in and chop it. But uh, just start with a little bit until you get the shape where you want and then go in and fine tune it. I think we got him pretty good. I'm double checking. We will uh, we will come in in a minute with the trimmer on this side. Get that line sharp. Get all this fuzz off underneath his neck because he's got a lot of it. Larry got no shortage of of beard. So you know he gets a nice uh, nice beard shape. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a picture on the screen, guys. One of my favorite haircut beard combinations I ever did. Got a picture of Larry when I first set up the uh, the camera set up in the back of the shop. And uh, man, it's a fire picture. I think you made it your uh, what profile picture and stuff for a while. Still is one of the best finished cuts and beards that I've, I've probably done, so. All right guys, so we're gonna finish, we're gonna finish detail on this side. So the back bar here, again, little as possible, but making it nice and clean. Some people's stuff grows crazy. Larry's pretty hairy, it grows all the way around his neck. So we're gonna have to get all this, but we wanna leave as much beard as we can. So just kinda get it started up here, work our way straight down. If you guys haven't used these Stockcraft Saber trimmers, guys, these are absolutely crazy. Sharp lines, they'll cut through a bunch of bulk. I could come straight through right now and reshape that beard and it would do it 
as a trimmer. But uh, you can use your clipper like I did, but like I'm showing you guys now, I can come in and adjust this. There's a little low right there, nice and sharp. So my clothes clipper really gave us a pretty nice line down here. So now I'm just gonna make sure it's good. Come in and vault all this out underneath the neck. Then we will raise with this other beard line. Now guys, this is a sensitive area for a lot of people. So you guys hear a lot of people complain about maybe the FX clipper or the FX trimmer, I mean, snagging hair down here. Maybe some other trimmers, you guys have seen it. His hair is growing crazy, so we have to go against the way it's growing. You guys watched my last video, we talked about that. If you ever have to come this way, don't go like this. Try to turn it this way and get the steel blade against the neck because if the cutting blade hits them first in this sensitive area, that's when you will cut them. All right guys, last but not least, a little razor work. Same thing. We're gonna leave it as wide as we can. Obviously, we gotta match that other side, make sure it's consistent, but we're gonna go ahead and get this top line set in, and now we'll round our way in. Again, taking off as little as possible. And I do the trimmer beforehand, guys, because a lot of people, this razor, it, you know, it really doesn't feel good. You know, you can stand it, you can deal with it, but the hairier the person, the more cheek hair they have, I wanna make sure that I cause them as little irritation as I can. So again, we're gonna put this in. First, we're gonna brush it off to double check it, and we'll come in and hit it a second time. And some of you guys may ask why I don't use shave gel. You're really gonna get a sharper line without it. Some people really require using some shave gel. I like to just get the area bald beforehand if I can, like I did, so that I cause less irritation. But I can get that sharp line. And again, guys, there's our ash line. We're gonna kind of brush it off with the comb. You see it kind of went away. And now we'll come back, hit it one last time. I haven't trimmed his mustache yet, so we will do that last. Larry's pretty good about keeping up with his beard pretty well. He said he, I don't know, what'd you say? He got into it a little bit, so he left it alone for a while, but usually he's not too crazy on the, definitely the neckline and stuff, he keeps up pretty well. But this time he let it, let it get long, so we had something to work with, so. There you go, guys, you wanna double check and make sure that the line is consistent, so I'm looking at where it's landing. Top corner of his hair here, it looks like it's consistent over here. That's another thing, guys, you wanna be double checking. I'll be sick if I do Larry's beard and let him stand up and I look over and I've probably even done that before and be like, hey, hold on, come over here and like even up those, those parts right there. All right, so last but not least, guys, we're just gonna trim his mustache off his lip. I would use the sabers, but they're a little bit sharp, so I like to switch to my effects. Come in, I'm basically following, you can't see it yet, but you got like the redder part of the lip, then you got the skin above it, so I'm kind of looking, I can see through his hair barely. I'm trying to basically line this up with the skin part of his lip, so again, we can put it back on, so start a little safer, and if you need to take it higher, you can, so he obviously, he obviously has a big, full beard, big full mustache looks okay. He doesn't want it super narrow. You know, that's something I talk about, leaving his sides a little fuller on his sideburn area. That's because he keeps up with this at home. And the more that I cut off, just like pushing back a hairline, if I take it super skinny over here on his sideburn area, the harder it is to keep it consistent and looking good. So we try to give him something that more or less, he's gonna be able to keep his neck cleaned up and the lines are gonna be sharp. He can kind of just maintain this and rock it for a little bit. Try to give him something he can kind of detail on his own. So same thing on the other side, no different than the rest of the beard guys we want to make sure that it's even on both sides. We don't want more lips showing. I'll tell you guys a funny story. My barber school teacher, he had multiple different reasons that he would let somebody cut his hair. If you were a new student and you weren't confident, he would have you cut his hair. And honestly, no matter how bad the haircut was, he would tell you it was good just to kind of boost your confidence, right? Like if you can cut the teacher's hair, you're probably doing okay. On the other end of that, if you were a student who was a little cocky and thought you were, you know, maybe better than you were, he would have you cut his hair and kind of be hard on you, maybe nitpick a little bit. And uh, one of our senior students, his name was Big C. Well, his name was not Big C. We called him Big C, he was seven foot tall, basically. One day he cut Mr. Cox's beard, uh, cut his hair, cut his beard, and let him out of the chair and looked over at him and his mustache was uneven. Big C says, oh, Mr. Cox, come sit back down. I want to, uh, I need to clean up your goatee, it's uneven, and he would not let him. So, kind of a lesson learned to double check those things before you let him out of the chair. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget that. It was, it was pretty funny because as silly as it sounds, you know, my teacher rocked an uneven goatee for a little while just to kind of prove a point, right? All right, guys, but that is it for the beard. My man Larry, super, super sharp beard. Definitely a nice haircut. You guys, uh, you didn't see him when he walked in, but he looked crazy. But I hope you guys gained something from that. Now that we're finished, you can see it gradually goes from the shape that we have. It's consistent to here and it starts to fade up. So it gives us a nice sharp line at the top. Fades out. I always do this to every client pretty much. I'm going to fade their beard out. I don't leave anything connected. Nice sharp line all the way around. 
around. I'm gonna go ahead and let him up after the video. I'm gonna clean the rest of his neck up. But I hope you guys gained something from the beard fade. If you guys did like this video, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed. I'm going to Tampa. If you didn't hear in the last video, I'm gonna vlog the whole thing and you guys don't wanna miss that. As always guys, I appreciate you watching these videos and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.